So this is a 2D axisymmetric model. Um, essentially, here is the y-axis, and the x would be the, the radial direction. So the green body here is a rivet, and we've got uh, two tool parts that are actually rigid bodies above and then below the rivet. Um, the rivet itself is a deformable body. We're just using the default structural steel nonlinear material model that's uh, in the ANSYS install. And then we've got two plates here that we're clamping together um, with the rivet, and they're just a linear structural steel material. Um, so we can just briefly look at the uh, material properties. This is the structural steel. Um, and this is the nonlinear, so we've got a bilinear isotropic hardening model with a uh, yield point of about 37,000 psi. Um, so we have nonlinear material. We have a number of uh, frictional contacts in the model, but basically anywhere that uh, contact could occur between the bodies in the model, we have frictional contact. It's uh, augmented Lagrange formulation, friction coefficient of 0.2. Um, so that's the basics of the model. We'll start out with a pretty crude mesh on the model. And note that we've got about 900 elements in the model. And then as far as boundary conditions, what we're going to do is just uh, we're going to displace this upper tool 0.38 inches downward, in other words, in the Y direction, to essentially smash the rivet to form a head inside of this cavity in the tool. Um, we're just going to hold the bottom tool fixed. And then we've got a radial or X displacement condition on the uh, Y axis here, so we don't get uh, any errors to do with negative radius elements. Um, in this model, I don't have any nonlinear adaptivity defined at this point, um, but it uh, does uh, converge to full uh, the 0.38 displacement. Um, if we look at just the rivet body itself, this is our equivalent plastic strain. We get a max of about 187 percent, and you can see our elements are pretty severely distorted up in the head region and also this point where it bends over the two plates that we're um, essentially trying to clamp together. So that's uh, probably you know not real accurate with the elements being that distorted. So with all that said, we can go ahead and uh, just duplicate this environment. And we're going to go ahead in this duplicate and put in a uh, nonlinear adaptive region just by inserting it in the environment, and then we'll scope it to the rivet body, and we'll go with a uh, mesh-based criterion, um, and we'll stick with the defaults for the corner angle at 160 degrees, specified recurrence rate at every sub-step, and then under our analysis settings, we'll expand the adaptive remeshing controls, and we're going to go with um, the default for boundary angle and number of sculpted layers. As far as global size ratio, we'll go with 0.75. And that's essentially what we need to set here. And we'll go ahead and solve the model. If we expand the solution branch, we can look at the force convergence here. This will take about a minute or so to solve. Um, it's a 2D model. Obviously, it, it solves pretty quickly. We're solving on uh, three cores here, and this is version 2019 R3 of mechanical. So we're at about 54% of the load, 58%. And we see we've had one remeshing occur. Um, we can also look at a uh, total deformation plot tracker. Um, you can tell the mesh has uh, been refined somewhat in the uh, upper region of the rivet. If we go back to the uh, solution information, you see that the, it's been remeshed again at about time 0.75 or so. So our solution is converging pretty nicely, and our 
you know, mesh has been regenerated several times. The element shape still looks pretty good. So this should be completed momentarily. It's up to about 99%. Okay, so if we go back and look at our solution information, the model remeshed three times here. Uh, if we look at our equivalent plastic strain plot, you know, we see that our mesh is still pretty good. I, the elements here around this corner, not quite as good as what we would like. So, you know, potentially we could go back and change some of our settings on the nonlinear adaptivity 